Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us here today, and thank you for staying socially distanced and for wearing your face coverings. My name is John Sinclair, and I serve as the Forest Supervisor for the Green Mountain and Finger Lakes National Forest. It is my personal and professional pleasure, pleasure to extend a warm welcome to all of you on behalf of the U.S. Forest Service and the partners who have helped to organize this event. We are gathered here not only to celebrate the beauty of the Green Mountain National Forest Muslimu National Recreation Area and the improvements that have been made at the Robert Frost Interpretive Trail, but also to thank those that have worked tires, tirelessly to advance conservation initiatives and recreation opportunities here in Vermont and throughout our nation. It goes without saying that Vermont's senior U.S. Senator has been a staunch supporter of our partners and our work here on the Green Mountain National Forest. I should also note that the Green Mountain National Forest has grown, and not by coincidence, by roughly 100,000 acres since Senator Leahy first was elected in 1974. The Senator has been a staunch supporter, staunch supporter of our lands program, the Great American Outdoors Act, and has helped to secure funding for our new supervisor's headquarters, which is currently being constructed in Menden, Vermont. Before I introduce our next speaker, I just want to thank you, Senator, for your continued leadership and commitment to our employees in the roughly 400,000 acres of National Forest Service lands that we manage here in Vermont. I would also like to thank Angelo Lynn and the Muslimu Association, who have worked tirelessly with our staff to enhance outdoor recreation opportunities to a diverse group of recreation users in the Muslimu National Recreation Area. This project specifically is one of the highest profile accessible trails in the state of Vermont, and we are extremely proud of that. Through our work with the Muslimu Association, we have been able to rise to the challenge of safely serving our visitors throughout the past year as continuing numbers of people have sought outdoor spaces to stay active and socially distanced. Thank you, Angelo, for all that the Muslimu Association has and continues to do in support of our National Forest Service lands. I would now like to introduce Monica White, the Vermont Commissioner of the Department of Disabilities, Aging, and Independent Living, to say a few words. The Forest Service has worked closely with the disability community by participating in various events working to offer opportunities for employment within the agency and supporting people of all abilities with meaningful access to their national forest. Thank you for being here today, Commissioner. Good morning, Owen Wayshorter. Good morning, everyone. I am so grateful for the opportunity to be here today and to join Senator Leahy, the U.S. National Forest Service, and the Musumalu Association to celebrate the restoration and expansion of the beautiful Robert Frost Interpretive Trail. I am absolutely delighted that this project was done mindfully to include accessibility for all Vermonters as a central focus. This past year has been extraordinarily difficult for all of us, perhaps most so for the Vermonters that the Department of Disabilities, Aging, and Independent Living serves. So it's such a joy to be here today focusing on this incredible resource for all Vermonters to enjoy as we emerge from this pandemic. I would also like to note that my colleague Ed Paquin of Disability Rights Vermont is also here today, and Ed is retiring this week after nearly 20 years with DRBT a very distinguished career of advocating for Vermonters with disabilities and for accessibility. So I'm very glad he could be here to recognize this. So thank you. We are incredibly lucky here to live here in the magnificent Green Mountain State with such abundant beauty in our natural landscape and a rich storied history we can all be proud of. That's why it is so important that this project was undertaken with an intention to be accessible and inclusive so that all Vermonters are able to take advantage of the many benefits this trail has to offer. An estimated one in five Vermonters is living with at least one type of disability and one in 10 of us have two or more disabilities. Additionally, Vermont's population is aging. 
It's estimated that over a quarter of our population, 28%, will be over the age of 65 by the year 2030. A key part of healthy aging includes having accessible exercise options for us all to keep moving and active as we get older. It is wonderful to know that Vermonters of all ages, with or without mobility impairments, will all benefit from this Robert Frost Trail to enjoy nature, to learn about history, and to share quality time together as neighbors and as friends. Our communities are so much stronger when they are inclusive of all Vermonters, and so I am incredibly appreciative of all of those who've worked so hard to make accessibility a priority for the restoration and expansion of the Robert Frost Interpretive Trail. Thank you very much. And with that, I'll hand the mic over to Angela Lynn, president of the Musa Malu Association. Hopefully I won't die on me. <laughs> uh, thank you, Monica, uh, for those words about the trail and uh, how it fits. I'll talk a little bit about how it fits into the Muslim Moon National Recreation Area. And the reason it's so great is we have 16,000 acres of wilderness out there, not quite wilderness, as in breadloaf wilderness, but mixed uses uh, from you know, hiking, biking, mountain biking, road biking, camping, fishing, birding. Uh, you name it, you can do it out there. And to have a trail of this caliber, uh, this was redone uh, because it was falling apart. But to have a whole nother use uh, within the Muslim move for, uh, that's universally accessible, this makes the Muslim move even more unique and more special of a place to come and visit time after time. So I think it gets wonderful that we have this special trail that's been built there. And it was quite an effort. Um, if you'll see over on the um, slideshow over there, this is the work that was being done throughout the last three years. Uh, it's quite a project. They, they built it to last forever. It's built out of composite materials that, as I was just being told, will last 50, 100 years. It's, it's not going to rut. It's going to maybe be broken if somebody takes a sledgehammer and hits it, but otherwise it's going to be there for a long time. So it was built well and just to also say something about that it's not cheap this sort of work is about six hundred fifty thousand dollars over the last three years and a little bit more than that when we get done the project scope of this uh, went into you know take down the old uh, pressure treated trail that was falling apart you couldn't be on it when they got to it last year because it was sloped uh, falling into the swamp out there and to have it, they did that part of it for the first year and a half, and then did the second part where they, as you can see up there, made the little grade, which wasn't easy to get the wheelchair up and over. And then it takes you out along the river to this beautiful meadow, with, which is filled with blueberries in the summer or in late August. And it's just magical out there. You can see the Red Loaf Mountains, uh, the presidential range over there. There's 10. Uh, peaks in the wilderness, Breadloaf Wilderness area that are over 13,000 feet, including Breadloaf, which is, or 3,000 feet, uh, <laughs> including, I was thinking Colorado. <laughs> Breadloaf, which is 3,000, almost 4,000 feet. I think Breadloaf is 3,800 feet. Uh, but they're beautiful views out there, and they have the public, all the public, be able to see that and to meander along the stream. It's just beautiful. And, and also, by the way, for those who haven't been there, uh, to read about a dozen of Robert Frost poems, which makes it a very contemplative trail and a very special place. Let me talk just briefly about how the Robert Frost Trail fits into the, about the, the larger 16,000 acre Muslim National Recreation Area. Uh, and a little bit about the Muslim Association and how this all fits within the U.S. Forest Service. Uh, first, let's talk about scale. There are 4.6 million acres of forest in Vermont, 4.6 million acres. About 78% of that is privately owned. 10% of it is owned by the, or is managed by the Forest Service, U.S. Forest Service, and 10% by the state forest. So out of that 4.6 million, 
forested acres. 400,000 is part of the Green Mountain Forest. That's mainly in central and southern uh, Vermont. And of that 16,000 is here in the Muslim Mountain. National Recreation Area. That goes from right about the Robert Foss Trail, um, you know, to Route 73, south to Route 73. And that's, you know, roughly in that corridor from those two areas. The Red Oak Wilderness is another 26,000 acres that sits between here and Lincoln Gap, between Middlebury and Lincoln Gap. So you kind of have this lay of the land here about who the, you know, where we are in this, in this forest and what the Moose Lamu is all about for these 1,600 acres. What, the moose, what makes the Moose Lamu special, as, as with the Forest Service, is that it's mixed use. That's, it's not a wilderness where you can't cut timber or mine or whatever you want to do. Uh, it's, it is totally mixed use. People live there. You can snowmobile, you can mountain bike, you can cross country ski, you can camp. We have drive-in camping, you have remote camping. Uh, you, you do, it's a wonderful place to do birding. Uh, there's blueberry habitat that's, that they actually uh, work to, to make it accessible and, and attract, uh, and make it available for blueberry picking up in the NRA. And that's just, that's a real special use. And what makes the NRA special is that it's dedicated to recreation. And this was, wasn't done that long ago. It was done in 2006. So in terms of legislation, uh, this is a relatively new uh, designation and, and it's uh, been a pretty special project. And it was funded with, uh, by Senator Leahy and some efforts with, with Senator Leahy and James Jeffords. Senator Jeffords both got together, put the legislation together as part of the 2006 New England Wilderness Bill. And that's when it was passed. Um, so that's, that's a pretty, pretty amazing thing. It started the Moose Moo to cap a little bit of history. The organization started back in 1989 with Tony Clark, who was the owner of the Blueberry Hill Inn. And he just got together a bunch of uh, area innkeepers and people interested in working together to kind of create a, a known entity here, a place to come and visit. And out of that, you know, kind of start back in 1989, uh, 15 years later in 2004, it was actually won a World Legacy Award by National Geographic in the Conservation International uh, Association. And that kind of put it on the map a little bit in, in terms of exposure. And it, and it created this reason kind of to, to, you know, this years of work actually created this reason to uh, have it designated. Um, as, a, as a recreation area, the one unique characteristic of the national recreation status is that it's run by a citizen board. You know, so it's an interesting symbiotic relationship between the Forest Service and the citizens of the community. Because the funding, a lot of this funding, the NRA for the Muslim actually comes through the board to the Forest Service and, and that's, that kind of gives the board a little bit of uh, advice. We're in an advisory role of what we think the community might uh, most like to see this area provide. And that's, of course, the Forest Service has all the rules and regulations and the authority to spend money <laughs> and actually make that happen. But it is with this citizen process that, that makes uh, the NRAs kind of unique. And so, I, and that was all set up by Senator Leahy, Senator Jeffords, and, and our team. So we greatly appreciate that work that was done. Um, just a little plug here. The Muslim Association is also a volunteer member-based association. Um, and so we do want members throughout the area and throughout the state uh, to join, to join for as little as $45. Uh, businesses are also encouraged to enjoy, uh, join and, the more people we have involved, the more reflected, reflective the area is of that need, the need that the people want. Um, so I will also say that in the last four years, uh, Senator Leahy has, was part of writing some legislation with others that has brought about a little over a million and a half dollars uh, to the 
Moose Lagoon National Wildlife Recreation Area, which has been helping us do the work that we're doing. Part of this has built the uh, Robert Frost Trail, renovated the Robert Frost Trail. We've also been working on uh, reconstruction of the Oak Ridge uh, Trail for mountain biking. Uh, we're doing a connector trail that will hopefully go from the Moose Lagoon Campground over to um, um, Silver Lake in Falls Alana and connect that. Uh, and we built a little Moose Lamu campground bike track for kids out there, a little pump track. It's been a lot of activity over the last four years, five years, working with other associations. The Moose Lamu is ba basically a parent operation that works with other member op uh, organizations like Bemba and BAST and other people. Uh, and we're also, hopefully we're gonna build uh, maybe a hut uh, within the Moose Lamu and have that be part of the Vermont Hut Association. And that's what we're currently working on as well. So uh, uh, without further ado, thank you for indulging that little bit of history and what we're all about. Um, I'd like to introduce Senator Leahy. As you know, he was first elected in 1974 when he was 34 years old. And he's now Senate Pro Tem and Chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee, which is helpful. He also worked or was with the Ag Committee for what, Senator 30 for a long time. Almost since he got there, he told me, since 1974. And that was uh, where he put so much effort and funding into the Forest Service for all these years. Uh, if I can, one more thing. Tom just gave me this note. He said, in addition to the 2006 legislation for the New England Wilderness Act, um, he also designated that in, in other legislation in 75 and 84, he designated the Big Branch, Breadloaf, Bristol Cliffs, George D. Aiken, Lyle Brook, and Peru Peak Wilderness areas, as well as the White Rocks National Recreation Area, all within the Green Mountain, Green Mountain National Forest. So this is just a little part here of what the Senator's done for the state. Forces. Senator. Thank you. Andrew, I really want to thank you for that. You know what? This is for both Marcel and myself. This is a a labor of love that we've done over all these years. Uh, and the fact that the two of us have been able to travel around the state and see all the parts makes such a difference. And uh, Johnson, player, the supervisor, glad to see him here. We, uh, I think Vermont is fortunate to have him here as supervisor. I would note um, we have in common, we go to the same barber. And uh, <laughs> it, it, it's worked out well. Uh, and Monica White, where did Monica go? Oh, wait. These, these masks someday, we'll, we won't be, won't have to wear them, but uh, Monica, thank you for what you said about making this accessible. You know, this is really amazing. I don't know many other states that could point out to something like this, especially a state uh, a population of just over 600,000 people than what we've done. Steve Terry, seeing him here, he's watched all these changes over the years as a buy. But what you've done with it, think of the trail, this is great today, but to be generations and generations and generations of Vermonters and non-Vermonters who will come here and see this, and what a gift it is. They come in to experience Vermont forests and meadows as Robert Frost speaks about them in the poems. And I'm really delighted to see the poems uh, situated along there. You know, he explored these woods and meadows. He wrote of them during the last chapter of his life. I was fortunate as a college student to be able to hear him uh, speak in Burlington. But, as an older person, he was here doing some of his very, very best work in a landscape and a pace that suited him. And when you walk around the, these trails, you can see why it suited him. 
And now, as a result of the work of the National Forest Service, uh, Musulu, I always have trouble pronouncing that, but I know what it is. Uh, the lovely path is accessible for everyone. And the accessibility, I really thank you for that. Uh, I was born in Montpelier, and I know my parents, we used to go hiking everywhere. We had a camp in Elmore, we'd hike around. But I knew so many kids uh, my age who never had the chance to do that. It wasn't accessible. And now we see this accessible. When our grandchildren came along uh, near where we have a house in the Washington area, they built a park, but accessible for everybody. And everybody said, why wasn't this done generations before? And you're doing it, so I thank you. And uh, we have an awful lot of beautiful places in this state on accessible on a Vermont scale. Driving down, we did take a moment to stop and at the falls. John Tracy knows I, I can't go by that without taking uh, more pictures. But it's what convinced me 15 years ago that this deserved national recognition is a congressionally designated national recreation area. I know there's some pushback when um, I asked Jim Jeffers to join me on the legislation. He did. We introduced it together uh, to designate this. We were getting pushback from all from much larger states, which would be virtually all of them. Uh, some of the Forest Service, some of my Senate colleagues from Western states looked at the map and said, that's a fly speck, there's no high peaks, there's no deep canyons. Uh, they said, come on, and it's, uh, I know it's nice, but it's not a national recreation area. I, I wanted to say, well, listen to me, Mr. Man, this is, but I, I did not go into my my Vermont accent, I just said very loudly, yes it is. I hold it up against any national monument for its recreational use, its value to our landscape. And just in case, the arguments and the photographs, and, and trust me, uh, I have a lot of photographs. <laughs> I take it, as everybody knows, I always have a camera with me, Marcel does. I was showing the photographs. And if that didn't convince them, I reminded them of what one of the real premises of the U.S. Senate's called seniority, and that it was my committee this was going to go through. So here we are within 16,000 acres. We have world-class cross-country skiing on the wonderful Catamount Trail, anchored in the north and south by Riker, uh, Blueberry Hill, Nordic Centers, Vermont Bike. Uh, Mountain Bike Association has built really fine bike trails, I know, because our granddaughter who bikes on them a lot tells me about them. And they're equestrian trails. The vast snowmobile trail winds through Muslo is camping on Silver Lake. Most years it's fully accessible, but you got to hike to get to it. Uh, brook trout fishing in Sugar Hill Reservoir. I'm, how many here have gone trout fishing there? As if you had... Tom that, Perry. You know, first Tom Perry's gone from my <laughs> uh, I, Whenever I want to know where is a good place to go fishing, I just call Tom and, and he says, okay, where are you going to be? Here are the three best places around it. And uh, we got acre, and the blueberries. The blueberries are really an interesting thing because, you know, you look at the blueberries and you have to stop. And you look at me and say, okay, this is peaceful. And at a time that we've gone through COVID and the horrible effect it's had in our whole country, think how this is going to help us heal. Not only physically, but mentally, to walk out to those places and just stop and look. You're going to soon host the um, Eastern Terminus of the North Country National Scenic Trail. If you really want to take that, you can take it all the way to uh, Minnesota. And I like the idea of the Vermont Huts. I guarantee you those are going to be used.
And of course, if you want to be more adventurous, it's a jumping off point for the uh, Patel and Predlow wilderness areas. And that's, of course, has the long trail going through it. So I'll, I'll pound for pound now, I'll put this up against any outdoor recreation area in the world. And we're just down the hill from Middlebury, just the road from Burlington. But what I like is, you know, we got that first legislation through, but you've all continued to work. Angela, your association, and all the others that have worked so hard. And so, of course, I'm going to support funding for here. And uh, I've already noted that, uh, my support of it, to uh, the Senate Appropriations Committee. And I do chat with that occasionally. And we'll, uh, we'll realize this full accessibility, the uh, potential. So, I, I mean, I, I could go on and on, but I, I'm preaching to the converted here. And the thing is, these are precious treasures in our state. What you've done to preserve it is what counts. You know, if you don't preserve it, and somebody comes and develops into something else, you never turn it back. If you preserve wilderness, and then later on you say, well, maybe we preserve too much, although I can't imagine that. But even if you did, you could say, okay, turn it back. But you can't put it back into wilderness when it's been developed. So <clears throat> what you, my fellow Vermonters, are doing, you're making a gift for all of us right now. But you're doing it for generations that will never know. And my children and grandchildren will be hiking through here. And that, that's the best gift anybody can give. And that's a gift which makes Vermonters proud. Thank you. So this concludes the remarks today. Thank you again, Senator. It's a pleasure for you to be back on the National Forest. For those interested, uh, this is there is now an opportunity for you to drive back to the uh, Robert uh, Frost Interpretive Trail uh, just down the road. Uh, we will have staff there that can help uh, show you around, or you're welcome to uh, hike the trail uh, on your own and uh, see our beautiful scenery. And I think the weather is actually going to hold out for us a little bit, so it will be a great opportunity for those that uh, have the ability. Uh, there's not a, a lot of parking, seeing we have a fair number of people here at the wayside, uh, at the trailhead itself. If you can walk about 100 yards down the road and park at the wayside, uh, that will open up some uh, additional parking for those that need it uh, at the trailhead. So again, I encourage you to uh, go and enjoy the trail and explore the Green Mountain National Forest. And uh, thank you again for being here today. <laughs>